Right, question five. Electron transitions are responsible for some of the properties of metals such as sodium, zinc and strontium and their compounds. Okay. The orange-yellow colour emitted by some fireworks is due to electron transitions in sodium. The colour is produced when excited electrons return to the ground state. State what caused the electrons to become excited. So we're talking about electrons moving up levels and then as they fall back down they release the specific quantized energy that they have absorbed in the first place. What caused them to become excited? Well, they're in a fireworks. So it was heat. Okay. A solution containing complex iron, you're given here. State the name of this complex iron. Okay, so we break it down. We've got six waters. So that's hexa, aqua, and then it's zinc. And then we need to put our, our actual uh, oxidation number. So this is actually quite easy because Zn h 6 Oh, here we go. It is equal to two plus, but actually all of your waters, because they are zeros, obviously that just comes to zero. So zinc is two plus. So there we go. Electron transitions involving this, the D subshell, let me just spin it down a second, uh, can give rise to colour in transition metal complexes. We know that. Explain fully why a solution of the complex ion of that one is colourless. Okay, it's worth two marks, so it's gonna you're gonna have to put two points in here. Right, for so mainly your biggest issue is that you have to understand why we see colour, and the colour means that we are seeing only in the visible. Okay. So if you don't have an absorption within the visible, then you're not going to see a colour change. And that's what's important. Okay? So the visible is not absorbed. Sorry, excuse me. So visible's not absorbed, um, and you may go down even further than that. Like you may actually say it's, it's into the UV, um, but the visible is not absorbed, and so we can't see it. So the other issue with zinc, though, is that zinc cannot absorb in this because it doesn't have the ability to absorb in the orbitals that will allow this to happen, which basically means your d orbitals are full. Okay, we have nothing that will allow us to do a D to D subshell split that would allow us to absor absorb in the visible. So it's these two parts that you need to put in. Okay, we've then got a couple of calculations. Um, oh, I can bring this down. We've got photon electron spectroscopy is a technique that provides information on electrons and energy levels. It uses electromagnetic radiation to eject electrons from an atom and measures the kinetic energy of these emitted electrons. Okay. A sample of strontium was exposed to electromagnetic radiation with a frequency of 3.08 times 10 to the 17 seconds per second. Sorry. Calculate the energy in joules of this electromagnetic radiation. So we're just looking at our formula, just E equals HF from the data book. Well, without the L, obviously. Um, so go find Planck, 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34. And Planck, it will tell you, is in joules second. Um, and then multiply it by our our actual frequency here, so 3.08 times 10 to the 17 gives us an answer at 2.04 times 10 to the minus 16 joules. Okay, um, I checked the mark scheme for this and they were accepting you to have basically taken it as far as it would allow 2.0 um, or you could have gone 2.042 or 2.04 to zero. Okay, right. Next question. Binding energy is the energy required to eject an electron from an atom. Binding energy is calculated in electron volts using this relationship. Okay, so we've got the binding energy is equal to the energy of the electromagnetic radiation, which we've calculated, uh, minus the kinetic energy. Okay, right, so we are in joules currently. Um, you're told a joule equals 6.24 times 10 to the 18 electron volts, and you're told that the electron was emitted with a kinetic energy of 1254 electron volts. Use your answers to calculate the binding energy. Okay, so I want to get to EB. I want it to be in electron volts, and I already have one of them. EK is in electron volts, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to shift my energy into electron volts so that I've got both of them in the same place. So to get my energy that I got up here, my joules, into electron volts, I'm going to do 2.04 times 10 to the minus 16. OK, 
okay and I am going to uh, multiply that by 6.24 times 10 to the 18 okay and then I'm going to take away my 1254 okay Try to keep it reasonably in the calculator, but just to see what I got when I plugged in the numbers. Oh, 0.96 minus my 1254 gave me 18.96 electron volts. Now, that gets you the mark. Um, if you rounded this to 19, got you the mark. Um, the, you could go the other way, so you could convert it all into joules like you do the first one convert the electric this into joules and then convert it back at the end um i think you're better doing it this way this is a much simpler setup um okay